Welcome to the wonderful world of rugby. Rugby is a hard-hitting, fast, action-paced team sport that's enjoyed all over the world and is gaining popularity here in the United States. The goal of this video is to help new or casual rugby fans learn the basics of the game so it's easier for them to watch a rugby game or match. Future videos will dwell a little bit deeper into the complex laws of rugby. As we all know, there are some very complex laws. So if you're curious about why certain things happen the way they do on the rugby pitch, subscribe to this YouTube channel and you can watch those videos when they drop in the future. But for now, let's stick with the basics. The game of rugby has a lot of similarities with American football, soccer, basketball, and even hockey. Like in American football, a rugby team is trying to take the rugby ball and place it down into the opponent's try zone, while their opposing team is doing everything in their power to prevent that from happening. Unlike in American football, the ball cannot be passed forward. It can only be passed backwards or laterally. There is the rare occasion where the rugby ball can be kicked forward, but there's a lot of complexity to that strategy, and that will be explained in a future video. Unlike American football, there is no breakup in play. There are no such things as downs. A team can pass the ball backwards or laterally as many times as they want until the opposing team commits a turnover, the team carrying the ball commits what's called a penalty, or the team carrying the ball is successfully able to place the ball in their opponent's try zone and score what's called a try. Let's see that again. As you see, the team is carefully passing the ball sideways or backwards until one of the players is able to get past the try zone and place the ball down for a try. Let's watch another team score a try. As you see, the team in blue is skillfully passing the ball backwards and laterally until the number 14 player gets the ball and is able to score in the try zone. Now let's slow it down and watch that again. As you see, the number 14 player skillfully gets the ball, is approaching the try zone with that white line there, gets past the defender, is able to put downward pressure on the ball into the try zone, and that's a try. Like in American football, after a rugby team scores a try, they're allowed to kick for a conversion to try to add more points to their score. Unlike in American football, a conversion kick in rugby isn't always placed at the same spot every time. Instead, the ball is placed anywhere on the pitch as long as it lines up to where the ball was placed in the try zone when the try was scored. The further away from the uprights the ball is placed in the try zone, the harder the conversion kick can be. Let's go back to our team in blue for example. Because the ball is placed pretty far to the right of the uprights, the conversion kick takes place further away from the uprights at an odd angle, making the conversion difficult. Fortunately, our kick is very good and is able to convert the try. But what happens if the ball is placed closer to the uprights or practically right underneath the uprights right here? The conversion kick can be closer to the uprights and much easier to convert. In rugby, a conversion kick is worth two points instead of one. A try is worth five points. So like in American football, after a converted try is scored, a team can walk away with a maximum of seven points. Now, unlike in American football, the team that scored the points receives the ball back once play resumes. Now, the reason for this is a little complicated. So just to keep it simple, try to think of rugby as a game of territory, not a game of possession. Unlike in the game of American football, in rugby, it's more preferred to play the ball regardless if you're in possession of it on your opponent's side of the field or territory rather than play the ball even if you are in possession of it on your side of the field. Now, the reason for this is because the chances of turning over the ball or the team holding the ball committing a penalty are high. What are penalties and turnovers? Let's talk about them next. So we talked about what a team with possession of the ball does in a game of rugby, but what about the team that's playing on the defensive side of play? Well, first of all, the defensive team is trying everything in their power to prevent the team with possession of the ball from scoring a try. In order to do that, they must legally tackle a player with possession of the ball. Unlike in American football, once a player has been tackled, the tackler must let go of the player. Because remember, unlike in American football, Play does not stop once a player has been tackled. It continues going. Likewise, the player who has been tackled must let go of the ball because now the ball is considered available for open play, meaning either team can now pick up the ball. 
Therefore, a good defensive team will make sure that they have a player ready to take the ball once a player has been tackled and the ball is available for open play and they can take that ball and commit the turnover or what has been referred to as the jackal. Now let's watch that again. As you can see, the team in black and blue has possession of the ball. They're going to pass it to player number 16, which is behind the player with the ball. Once player number 16 gets the ball, the green team is going to try to tackle that player down. Once he is tackled, you see that top player, number 18, is able to get the ball and jack it away. Because again, once player number 16 is tackled, he must make the ball available for open play. Number 18 is there to take the ball. The jackler cannot be the same player that tackled player number 16. It has to be someone different who will thus jackal the ball and commit the turnover. Now there is a way for the team who has possession of the ball to prevent the ball from being jackaled, and that's by forming what's called a ruck. Now as mentioned before, once a player who has the ball has been tackled, they must let the ball go and make it available for open play. Now, in order to prevent the ball from being jackaled, a player on the same side as a tackled player can place themselves over the ball and create what's basically a protective barrier over the ball or called a ruck. Once that ruck has been formed, the ball is now no longer available and remains in possession of the team who originally had the ball. Usually another player will come up to the ruck, called the scrum half, and will take the ball and like a quarterback, will now delegate the ball out either by passing it sideways, laterally, can even kick the ball away if they want to, and keep possession of the ball for their team. As mentioned before, there is no stoppage of play, so a team can form a ruck as many times as possible as long as it's done legally. So there's been many good examples of a ruck being formed in the video showing right now, so why don't we go back and take a closer look at exactly how a ruck is formed. So in this example, the yellow team has possession of the ball and the number two yellow player has been tackled. The number 14 yellow player goes over the down tackled player and forms the ruck. Number nine player, the scrum half, goes behind the ruck to get the ball and passes it to one of his teammates, who then proceeds to get tackled himself. The number five yellow player, now as you see, is pushing out the would-be jackler to form the ruck. The number nine player, once again, the scrum half, takes the ball and passes it back to one of his teammates. A jackling the ball to force a turnover or forming a ruck to protect the ball requires a lot of skill and it really comes down to who gets to the ball that's made available after a tackle has been made first. Let's go back to our prior example. As you see, when the team in black and blue gets the ball, the number 16 player receives the ball. It's the jackler, the number 18 player in green, that gets to the ball before the ruck is formed. Therefore, he's able to successfully cause the turnover. Playing rugby requires a lot of skill, speed, timing, not only on the offensive side, but the defensive side as well. One more thing that should be mentioned about the ruck is that when the ruck is formed, not only does it create a protective barrier over the ball, but also forms an imaginary line that the opposing team cannot cross, therefore allowing the team that formed the ruck to safely pass the ball sideways or backwards without any inter interference from the opposing team. Now you're going to see a great example of this in just a couple of moments from the black team. As you see, the team in black has formed the ruck, and the team in orange is standing behind where the ruck is formed. That's where the line is. If a team happens to go over that line before the ball is safely released from the ruck, as in the scrum half passes the ball back, then they will be considered offsides. As you see right there, now that the ball has been passed, the orange team is safely allowed to cross the line, but no sooner until after the ball has been released from the ruck. Otherwise, once again, they will be considered offsides, and that is a penalty. When a penalty is committed, that is the only time in rugby when passage of play is stopped, and the offended team is awarded the ball. 
Now, there are many, many different types of penalties in the game of rugby, and they can be very confusing. Again, this video is a simple video. I will make videos in the future going in-depth of exactly what penalties are in rugby and how they are committed. But for right now, let's focus on the penalty that was committed here. As you see, the number 10 player was tackled by the player in blue, but the player in blue did not release the tackled player, and therefore, the penalty was committed, and the team in black is awarded the ball. Now, when a penalty is committed, the team that is offended and given the ball has the option to go for a penalty kick. A penalty kick is very similar to a field goal in American football, and it's worth three points. The kick is taken from the spot of where the penalty is committed. Obviously, the closer the penalty is to the uprights, the easier the kick. And the team that is given the ball doesn't have to take the kick. They have the option to continue playing to go for a try. But some kickers are very talented and can kick from as far away as 50 meters from the uprights. Let's see if this kicker is one of those talented kickers. And it's good! And that's the game of rugby. Teams go back and forth trying to score tries, jackal the ball, or kick penalty kicks after a penalty has been committed. Matches of rugby are played over two 40-minute halves with a 10-minute halftime. Matches of rugby can end in a draw unless it's a championship match or part of a knockout tournament. And in that case, the match will go into overtime with golden point rules, meaning the team that scores the points first, regardless of the means, wins the match. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and more importantly, I hope that it gave you at least a better understanding of the game of rugby so that the next time that you watch a match, it's much more enjoyable to watch. The game of rugby is an amazing and fun game, and the only way that you really can learn more about the ins and outs of it is by watching more rugby. As mentioned before, I will create videos that will deal more with the complexity of rugby, including set plays, mauls, scrums, and of course, penalties in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe and wait for those videos to drop in the future. But in the meantime, have a great day, and I hope to see you at a rugby match.